Okay, today we've got a really familiar integral. This one's from the MIT integration, be 2011, problem 12. We have here the integral of secant x dx. Okay, so the first thing I wanna mention on this is this is an integral that we usually don't really use any method at all. We just kind of memorize the answer. And so probably your easiest method would just be to just write down the answer, which we will usually write as natural log secant x times tan x. So this is gonna be your fastest method, of course, just memorizing it and writing it down. But I want to do a little more work on this, so I'm actually going to do this by two methods. So I think with these two methods, I think the first method is probably like less popular, but easier to do, or maybe quicker. I don't know, I'll let you decide. But for the first method, we do this kind of non-intuitive method where what we do is we multiply this numerator and denominator by secant x times tan x. The weird thing about this method is it's like you probably wouldn't think of this on your own. Like I wouldn't really think to do this but it is gonna work out pretty nice. So when I multiply this out, what we're gonna have, of course we're gonna have our secant x and tan x in the denominator. And then multiplying this through, we're gonna end up with secant squared x plus secant x tan x. And the reason this works so nice is because it's perfectly set up for a u substitution, because if we take our denominator to be our u, then we have exactly our du here in the numerator. So let's just do this and I'll make my u this denominator here. And then when we integrate, I'll just change the order. So when I integrate tan x, that's gonna give me this piece, which is secant squared x. And then when I integrate secant x, that's gonna give me secant x tan x dx. So we'll make this substitution. Of course, we just have du over u. Then integrating this, we're gonna have natural value. <laughs> natural value, what? And then this is gonna give me just natural log of the absolute value of u. I'll just back substitute in one step. So we'll have natural log secant x tan x plus c, and that's gonna match the solution we have right there. Okay, now for my second method, I think it's gonna be a little bit more work, but it doesn't rely on the kind of trick that we used in the first method. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my secant x, I'm gonna actually write it as one over cosine x dx. And then in order to get kind of more things to work with, because we just have a one in the numerator, I'm gonna multiply the numerator and denominator by cosine x. So then I'm gonna have cosine x dx in the numerator. Now we're gonna have cosine squared x here, but I wanna write this as one minus sine squared x because I'm trying to set up a u substitution, which I'm gonna do now. We want our u to be just sine x, and then we're set up here where our du is gonna be cosine x dx. And then we'll just substitute, so we'll just have our du in the numerator, and now we're gonna have one minus u squared here in the denominator. And now, of course, we could factor this and do partial fractions, but I'm gonna just do a little bit of a shortcut in that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write it, we'll write our, we'll break out our, we'll factor our denominator the way we would for partial fractions. But then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of create something in the numerator to make this easy on myself. So what I'm gonna do is kind of create the one plus u here and then also create the one minus u and then add them together. Noticing when I do that, you know, when we separate this out, we're gonna have cancellation of the one plus u and the one minus u. But then adding these together, the u's are gonna cancel and we just have two. Now we just have a one here, so we don't wanna change it. I'll multiply by a half out front. And now we'll go ahead and split this into two integrals. So in the first one, again, the one plus u's are gonna cancel. So I'm just gonna write this as du over one minus u. And then for our second one, we're gonna have our one half out front, but then the second one, the one minus u's are gonna cancel here. And I'm just gonna have du over one plus u. So when I integrate the first one, I'm gonna have a minus come up because we have a minus on the u here. So I'm gonna write this as minus one half natural log one minus u. And then this one is just plus, so this one's just gonna be a plus one half natural log one plus u. But then with the properties of natural logs, I can combine these. I'll factor one half out, and I'm gonna write it, we'll write, because this has a minus, we'll write this in the denominator as one minus u, and this one's gonna be one plus u. And then now we can just back substitute to finish it off, but I just need to clean it up for more space. Okay, so now we're ready to back substitute with our u value. So when we write this, we're gonna have one half natural log one plus sine x, over one minus sine x. I'm just gonna take this off to the side and simplify it for a second. What I wanna do is get this back into this form. It looks a little different here, even though it's actually the same thing as we'll see in a second. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply by the conjugate here in the denominator. Well, actually in the top and bottom, we're gonna multiply by the one plus sine x. Then when we do this, we're gonna have, in the denominator, we're gonna have one minus sine squared x. And then in the numerator, I'm gonna just leave this as one plus sine x squared. But this here, of course, is cosine squared. So again, I'm gonna rewrite, we'll do one plus sine x squared here. And then this is actually cosine squared x. 
So now I'm going to take this and we'll plug this back in here. Okay, so now in the rewrite, because both these terms are squared, I wrote it all together squared. But then by the properties of the logarithms, I can take this into the exponent, this one half here. So this is going to actually cancel with this to get us back to our first power. And then I can rewrite this and divide the cosine into both terms. So what I'm going to do is we're going to have my divide one by, when we divide one by cosine x for the first term, we're going to have our secant x. And when I divide sine x by cos x, we'll have plus tan x. Then I'll just add a plus c. And that's it. So there you have it, integral of secant x, two different ways. We'll stop it there. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a great day.